So there are different ways you could change the efficiency on steam pistons and stoneworks. And I found one of the ways. I'm going to be changing this later, probably, to make it better. But first, I should probably give a brief explanation on how they work, or at least how I think they work. So you have an input here and here, a steam in on the top and bottom, and then you have a steam out here. So you can imagine on the inside of this, in this little area, the piston itself, you know, the piston head can only go from here to here, and it's just that up and down motion. So with that knowledge, we can say that as the piston goes up, we want to fill this chamber with steam to push the piston back down so it continues that motion. And as it goes down, you want to fill this chamber with steam to push it back up. And of course, we need to let the steam out so it doesn't build up and explode. And then how I did it is I took the rotation from the piston and put it into two thresholds. And this first threshold is saying from 0 0.01 to 0 0.5. So if the piston was neutral here in the middle, then 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 as it's going up. You want to open this valve to push the steam inward to push the piston head down. And the other threshold is saying from negative 0.01, so imagine the piston head's neutral here in the middle. So from negative 0.01 to negative 0.5, you're filling this chamber with steam to push the piston back upwards, and then it'll continue that cycle. So it'll get pushed down, and then once it gets down, it'll get pushed back up. And the reason this number and this number, the, re the reason they aren't zero is because they would reach an equal point, these two thresholds, where the top and bottom valve would open, but would fill both of these areas with steam, and it would eventually slow the piston down and it would stop working. This is the part where I built a steam engine, but it took me way too long to say that in the video, so I'm just gonna- So, to make a piston- or a steam engine first, or just a steam powered anything, you're gonna need some sort of heat, and so for this case I'm just gonna use a coal firebox, a large one because it produces more heat. And then I'm just going to throw a coal duct, a big one onto the top of it, to give it enough fuel to last a while. So now what I want to do is I want to add a way to light the firebox, so I'm just going to make it nice and enclosed and look a little better. And I'll just add a key. Uh, I found more recently that if you just have a push button, it's going to take longer to ignite than if you were to just have it on a key that you turn off after a few seconds, but yeah, it's just a quicker way of doing it. And we're also going to need a battery as well, so might as well add that in. I'll just throw that back here. So now what you want to do with the firebox is you have exhaust, uh, exhaust, air, and two coolants. So the exhaust, I'm just going to put in a pipe and a bunch of catalytic converters so that it doesn't make a bunch of smoke. Actually, no, I like the smoke. The smoke looks nice. Does everyone in the industrial revolution? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll skip the Cadillac converters and just put a port on so the exhaust can escape. And then for air, if you wanted to turn the firebox off, you just give it no more air, but I'm not really going to want to be turning it off, so I'm just going to put on the port. And so you have the coolant in and coolant out. So what I like to do is I'll take pumps and I'll connect a pump to the coolant out and a pump to the coolant in. You have to make sure they're in the right orientation, otherwise it won't work. You don't have to do this, but I find that it makes it a little bit faster. I'm going to connect those to electricity, and I'm not going to connect it to the key because we're going to need to control these so we don't have to vent everything too much. So now I, I connect these pumps to the boiler. It doesn't matter what orientation they're connected so the out can go into this one or this one and the in can pull from this one or this one, it doesn't matter. There we go. So now what I want is a threshold gate and this will control the pumps so that if it gets too, or if there's too much pressure, it'll stop adding heat. And just for this engine, I don't really, or this boiler, I don't really want it to explode because, you know, 
bad. So I'm going to say from negative 2, just so we know that it's below 0, and negative 1, actually, we can just say negative 1. If it gets too hot, then it won't explode. So that should be connected to the pressure, yep. And now on the boiler, we have a steam out and a water in. I'm not going to connect anything to the water in because there's already a water level here. So that's not really necessary, but if you're making, you know, a really big engine, a power train or something, then you'd want to add more water. Steam out. Um, we need to connect that to our pistons, but before we do, uh, I would recommend adding a valve at least to the outside in case the pressure gets too high up. So we would add another threshold. This one would say if the pressure is from 8 to 9,999. Then you open that valve because, you know, if the pressure gets too high, then you're going to want to release some steam. Okay, I've switched that to a large port instead of a small one just so it can hopefully release more steam. I don't know if it actually makes a difference. But yeah, this boiler won't be exploding. If we grab our pistons, I'm going to do the medium ones because they're medium and not so large. Uh, that's steam out, so we need to flip it around. So now we have five medium pistons and you can see the steam in on every single one and the steam out. So I'm going to connect a valve onto all of the steam outs because we're going to be releasing it. And a valve onto all the steam in because we're going to be controlling that. And then every piston is also going to get two thresholds to control those. Now, we need a port on the exit for the steam to, you know, escape. And we want to connect all of these valves to this little plate. For each of these, the two threshold gates, you're going to want to set it to the numbers before. You can change this if you want, but these are the numbers I like because they're steel ones. Yeah. So 0 0.01 and 0 0.5 for the up ones because as it's going up, you're going to want to let steam in and out. And you're going to want it for the down motion as well. So negative 0 0.0.5 0 .5 and negative 0 0.01. The reason this one is on the bottom now is because it's the high threshold, but since it's a negative, it's closer to it's the it's higher because it's a smaller negative. Yeah, okay. And so this one is gonna connect to the bottom ones because you know down motion open the down one to let in steam to push it back up. It's it's not that difficult. And the reason I copied and pasted this is so that we have the same values for every single one. Now we just have to connect these all. So the piston rotation is what connects to the threshold. Also, sometimes your pistons will be upside down like this. So whenever they're like that, then this motion is technically the upwards motion according to this model. So the ones on the bottom would be the ones on, you know, it's just the orientation, so you just have to think about it a little bit. Okay, they all have electricity, they're all connected, this has this, this. Uh, you could add a pump into this system as well, just to pump it faster, but, you know, not necessary. Unless, of course, this is eight blocks high. I don't know why your boiler would be so low in accordance to the engines, but that's not what's important. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. On these pistons, they all have their different rotation offsets. So you're going to want to make sure that if they're all like this, it's not going to work because they're not going to keep their momentum. So I like to set offset them by uh, 0. Or, yeah, 0 0.25 each. Of course, I guess it really depends on how many pistons you have, because some offsets might be more efficient than others, but 
We have five pistons, so this should work just fine. Should be able to light this. That's gonna heat up. And then because we added the pumps, this is gonna heat up fairly quickly. It's not gonna heat up the fastest because we didn't add the larger pumps. But it's still going pretty quick. So now I just have to wait for that. We should see the pistons start turning. Yep, there they go. They're all in their circular motion. And you can see the valves are toggling. True, false, true, false. And you can see they're all, well, they occasionally let out steam whenever they go upwards. And so, yeah, it works. It's not a powerful engine because, again, it doesn't get, well, it does get, actually, yeah, I didn't think about that. So, yeah. That's how you make a steam engine and how you make it a little more efficient. I will be changing up the system so that it's a more realistic expulsion of steam. But yeah, for now, this is pretty much going to be it. So yeah, 